All right, what we have here is a 2004 Chevy Astro van. It's been pretty heavily modified to make it more 4x4 capable. Uh, 2003, 4, and 5 is what's considered a third gen version of the van. So they came with a 16 inch, six lug wheel, four wheel disc brakes, uh, no EGR valve. Uh, I believe there's some other upgrades when it comes to the suspension. And yeah, uh, you guys have just recently seen this maybe on Wonder Hussy Adventures on YouTube. And it was a very fun video. I just want to let you guys know that we were both, you know, slightly inebriated there on different things. And so it wasn't probably the best. And I was reading her comments and a lot of people wanted to know more about the van. So that's what I'm about to do. And the first thing I'm going to address with you is the MPGs. Okay, because I did misspeak there. We're gonna have a helicopter fly over our heads now, of course, like it always does. Most annoying thing ever. It's Los Angeles, so as long as they're not shooting at me, I'm okay. <laughs> I said in the video when she asked me about MPGs, I was quiet for a moment because it's it's usually really not such a simple answer, but I'm gonna try to be simple. I said there are 13 MPGs. That was not correct. Um, it was at that moment, I was actually upset about it because that whole trip, I'd been to Arizona and done a huge loop and then into Death Valley and then to go out and meet her, I was fighting crosswinds, headwinds, elevation changes and a lot of grades and some steep grades. So at highway speeds, going through all that, that's what I was getting and I was upset about it. <clears throat> but it changes all the time. Uh, I drove from Los Angeles to past quartzite to a chevron station on a full tank of gas and was still able to get uh i think eight gallons left i think i did the math and it was like 14.8 miles per gallon something like that i'll give you the flowers for a backdrop here for a minute it's pretty pretty here <laughs> so typically at highway speed out here in los angeles and around the southwest i'm getting you know around somewhere between 14 to 18 miles per gallon at highway speed. I'm going to go through all the uh, improvements and changes and modifications I've done on the van and kind of explain to you along the way how MPGs changed with the new gearing and the new ECU and all the other things I've done to it, all right? So let's get into that right this moment. When I bought the van, it came with a 17-inch method wheel and uh, a Hanuk all-terrain tire and rancho adjustable shocks those were the only modifications other than that it was all stock since then i've done a 4x4 conversion by journeys i will generate the van and show you that i've stepped up to a 32 inch tire the uh with the lift and everything i had to get a new drive shaft made that was a little longer I had some issues with that it's running an MP233 transfer case from an S10. I'm running S10 springs on the rear with coilover shocks because I was having an issue with uh, sway on the rear end at highway speed and, and hitting bumps and whatnot. Yeah, the tires happen to be a good quality all-terrain. That's the Falcon Wild Peak AT3Ws. They're also an LT tire. That stands for light truck, and that means that the tires have a 10-ply sidewall. Um, one of the things with the what you just saw being out there in, in Death Valley with all the rocks, a lot of people blow their tires out. Yeah, try to find, if you have a 16 inch wheel, it's easier. Try to find a light truck tire because they're going to have a 10 ply sidewall, and that's what you want if you're going off road and if you're going to air down. Um, one of the things that's interesting about the lift is, and you should be able to see it right here, that's one of the body spacers. So there are three inch body spacers on this thing. When you do a three inch body spacer, um, what happens is that you're typically your, well, absolutely correct. The uh, oil pan and everything else is gonna be still sitting pretty low. Now you'll see here, my oil pan's way up out of the way. And I was able to achieve that with custom engine brackets. Uh, they're in the red right there. You should be able to see that in about the center of your screen. Now, I didn't invent that. It was an idea I had. Everybody who has an Astro van has the idea of, gee whiz, how do we lift the engine? A big problem with these things is, and you can see the wear on the oil pan right here, is the oil pan is oftentimes sitting right here on the front axle. 
once you do this engine lift bracket thing, that's no longer an issue. And now from this front cross member all the way to the cross member, it supports the transmission. It is a flat line. And I've got, I think like an inch and a half of space from the bottom here, the bottom there to the bottom of that oil pan. So I will be doing a, a long flat skid plate right across the bottom of this truck. Uh, that's going to be kind of next on the list there. Uh, you can see with the lift what my CV axle angle looks like. It's not terrible. It would be nice to have it a little bit straighter, but you have to crank on those torsion keys a bit. I do have a replacement torsion key, uh, torsion keys in this thing, uh, which gives you a little more lift capability. Uh, when you lift the engine, you also have to lift the transmission. Now my buddy Dave made the brackets, but they came to us from a guy named Kai. He's a Japanese guy out in the desert. I'll try to remember to put a link to his page. He sent me a set, and I'm very happy that he did that. We improved upon what he sent us, uh, did a little bit better, better job on them, and uh, they're working great. With the S10 springs, I'm running a greasable shackle bolt. These things were really uh, making a lot of noise when I first put them in. So I think it was four wheel design or off road design out of Colorado. They were like six bucks a piece. Be careful if you're looking for these because you'll see people trying to sell them on eBay for like $60 a piece. It's outrageous. Um, I did re gear this to four tens front and rear. I got a posi traction on the rear. Uh, so both wheels are turning, which really helps you off-road, as you guys know. You'll note that shock mount hanging off the axle, that's going to be going away shortly. Uh, when I was backing up in part of the video with Sarah, when I whacked something, I think that's what I whacked. That was the only thing. I had plenty of clearance here. None of this hit any of the rocks or anything. So it was, you know, I was told that was the case and I was going to get lucky with that. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, what else? I do have a new ECU. It's a reflashed ECU. It's uh, done in a way where the computer now knows it's got 32 inch tires. And um, he changed the shit. Ewalt's auto tuning. His name's Evan. I'll try to remember to put a link to him in the, in the description as well. Um, you might not see it if you catch this video early, but I'll get to it. Uh, he also changed the shift points in the transmission, uh, which gave me much better fuel economy in the city which I really am happy about. Uh, there will be an aftermarket bumper coming. I have a connection through a friend. It sounds crazy. I'm not saying it's gonna happen because a lot of people will tell you things are gonna happen they never do, but I'm gonna set up an appointment to go down and talk to uh, the guy from Illumines. And there's a pretty decent chance that he's gonna do some bumpers for us for the Astro van, uh, if it's worth his while. I also have, I was told you know, hasn't happened yet. He said, you'll have it by the summer, but the summer's like a few days away. <laughs> it's not here yet. But I'm supposed to have a rear bumper for this that will have a tire mount here and a large box here. Uh, the only negative thing about it for me is, uh, you know, that's going to add length to the van. Uh, I'm in the city. So, but what I'm loving about it is that box is going to be large enough for all my recovery gear, mechanics, tools, and all that stuff to get it out of the inside of the van. Um, the spare tire, I went to a lot of work and trouble and I got a lot of help from my buddy Dave to be able to fit a full 32 inch spare here. And the only way that was able to happen was to reroute this exhaust completely all the way over to the right here, to the passenger side. And uh, so it's doable, you know, Dave's a good welder and all that. We poked. We poked the exhaust out the side. Uh, that was just a trick thing to do at the moment. Uh, it's my truck. I get to do what I want with it. I think it's kind of cool. I prefer that to having the exhaust hanging way low here. It, one less thing to whack the ground or get smashed on anything. Uh, it's an aftermarket rear diff cover. Uh, again, you can see the coilover shocks. Um, yeah, so this step is very handy i've got a really neat deck up here this is my own design my own fabrication it's a no weld deck platform it's pretty heavy duty it's a quarter inch thick angle two inch angle mounted where the factory mounting uh, was for the factory rack with a quarter inch angle 
rail on either side. Shoots all the way down the length of the van. Running across the top of that is the Unistrut and then a piece of Unistrut on the outside. I have to, I've been meaning to tighten this angle up. I just want to kind of try to follow the curve of the van for aesthetics. This has been up here quite some time now. It's holding up. I oiled it not long ago. That's why it's kind of dirty looking. The oil actually tracks dirt, which I don't like, but uh, that's fine. You know, uh, I'm going to eventually change that out for something else. Not a big deal. I put these, uh, these things here in and they're mounted to be flush. All right. So I could slide things down the top of the van uh, deck here without anything uh, getting caught. My way to get up here is this right here. That's it. No ladder. Uh, with that, most people don't even notice it. It's one of those things when you see a van with a ladder, I don't know, I feel like people are kind of tempted to uh, want to climb a ladder. And with this, I just put a foot here, get up on the bumper, put my right foot there. I just lift up, I put my left knee up there and I grab the handle, I'm up on the roof. Real simple. Um, so, you know, stay fit enough so you can still do that, <laughs> I suppose. Um, let's see here. I, the kit for the lift is the Journeys kit. I had them put it in. Wasn't super happy with their work. The new transfer case leaked right from the jump. I don't want to get all that into that. I've got a bunch of old videos on that. You can see it all. This is the linkage here right there coming down out of the floor that uh, manually helps you to shift four high, four low. So now when you drive around, you are in two wheel drive all the time. Uh, went to drive shaft pros for that really cool guy there. I'll probably be going back to them to do some other things. Uh, this is a 27 gallon tank. So, you know, I could drive pretty far on that tank as I was going to, well, I was kind of t touching on earlier with the fuel economy. The weird thing is, um, my recommendation is this. If you get a van like this, you get an Astro van, and you're going to upgrade it, you want to go off-road, stick with a 30-inch tire and your standard 342 gearing. That gave me the most power and fuel economy. Uh, it wasn't the best in the city. The irony about this is when I went to the 410s with the 32-inch tires, I got much better fuel economy in the city. I mean, it's ridiculous. I love it now. I was just going through gas like crazy. And now in the city, it's, it's pretty amazing. I was just doing 40 miles an hour down third and I was getting 24 miles per gallon. Uh, so that's pretty wild. Uh, so yeah, some 40 under 60 in that range I can get amazing fuel economy. Again, it just depends on a grade and elevation and wind and that sort of thing, but it's, it's pretty wild. So if there was like a terrible situation and you had to get somewhere and the speed with which to get there doesn't matter, but your range does, just adjust that with your foot, <laughs> right? You know, some people are thinking about these scenarios when it comes to like end of the world or something or like a bug out situation. I don't have to do 80 or 90 miles an hour, you know, maybe initially you get away from something, but if I'm cruising on the highway, and if I'm only doing 50 miles an hour and speed doesn't matter, there's not a lot of people to annoy, I'm going to get much better fuel economy. Now, when the plan is when I get the rear uh, tire mount, I want to get another tank to mount between the frame rails where the tire is sitting now, the spare underneath the vehicle. I should be able to get another 20 gallons there, possibly, so I could have about 47 gallons of fuel in this thing. That would be a big deal. Also, somebody made a point to me that I hadn't really considered, which is an important point. They said, hey man, that thing's paid off. You're not making payments. And if you're not paying the crazy extra insurance you have to pay on a new vehicle, then the gas cost doesn't really matter too much. So those of you who have new vehicles and you're making payments and you got crazy insurance rates and all that, yeah, on top of all that, the cost of fuel right now, crazy. By the way, I'm paying like $5.20 a gallon in LA. It's ridiculous. Even half that cost, I think, is ridiculous. I cannot wait until there's a sea change with the government because what they're doing right now with fuel is just ridiculous. Um, got a shovel up here. I have a, a belief system on these things with the amount of gear people put on the outsides of them it looks very cool but it's also it attracts 
too much attention, I think. I have recovery boards. They came in a really nice case. Um, I forgot to bring them last time, actually. Uh, but typically, I bring them with me in the van. If I have to use them, I can easily strap them to the, to the rack if they're dirty. I'm running a Nylite 42-inch uh, light here that lights everything up. They recently sent me a replacement and lights for the side for nothing, but they want me to do a video for them. And I will do that. I'm currently running this light in through here on the windshield, down in the engine compartment, through the steering column hole, and to the switch. I'm going to have to get a gland, so I'm going to have to take some deck boards off, put a gland through the roof, and I'll be able to... This isn't working right now, it's just mounted, but this is a backlight. Right, so that lights up everything behind me. So I'm going to run that and then there's going to be four pod lights, I believe, that are small enough to tuck right up underneath here. So they're going to be nice and tucked underneath the deck. You won't even really notice them too much. And they'll be able to light up the sides. Uh, so that'll be an upcoming video, hopefully sooner than later. They're, they kind of want me to do that for them pretty soon. It's one of those things with YouTube when a company asks you to do something, you know, you got to, if they're going to send you a free product, you kind of have to do it. I've been adverse to accepting some offers up until now but uh, you know i'm open to it let's uh pop open the inside and show you what i'm thinking about in there because it's not done as you guys know from watching that video just hang on a sec for those of you that don't understand the dutch door system there's a little button here i've got this string here by the way i can pull this when i'm inside the van and it'll open this up and then you can open these lower doors and this is not set up for you it's not cleaned it's pretty dirty still from the last trip um, you know it's not that important to me i do need to deal with it this is a floating deck so it's only supported on the two ends uh, i kind of haphazardly threw these uh, rails in before i left on that trip to make room for the new fridge that i have um, I think I was pretty smart. This is actually just a uh, hardware bin I made. Just, yeah, it's work related. This is a big deal right here. This is the Lifesaver Jerry Can. It's a five gallon uh, water jug. NATO uses these. It has a filter system built into it. I believe it's good for over, yeah, an extra belt, for over uh, 300,000 gallons. So if you find a place and you got a water source, you're golden. You don't need to bring water. While I was at the hot springs, I used the water there. If that's the water that's still in it. Once you use it, you can never let it go dry or you need a new filter. The filter will lose its ability to do its job. So once you start putting water in this, you always have to keep water in it. This is a uh, jump box in here. It's a pretty decent one. I got a folding chair here, some other stuff stuck down there. This will have a fold down on it at some point. You guys already saw this in Sarah's video. This just folds down. It's a cutting board and so some other storage in there. The uh, yeah, None of this is really done, but I will be putting more time into it soon. The aromatic cedar roof, she said, oh, that's just purely aesthetics. And I agreed with her in the video. But the truth is, I did it because you hear, and I've done this before for people, uh, that cedar, aromatic cedar, keeps the bugs out. So I figured if I put that in here, maybe it'll help keep some of the critters out of the van. It does seem to work. Uh, it smells really good, uh, in particular when it's warm out. I obviously have to still dress the edges, and I've got some plans for this that are going to be very unique uh, for the interior that you don't typically see in other van builds. So you'll, you'll see that as it goes. I, like I said, I didn't clean this for you. It's all kind of a mess. But I thought you'd get a kick out of this down here because this I had to pull some things out of here yesterday. I did a, uh, a video on a lot of the different knives, including this one, that I have. And I had to dig it out of there. But I just thought you might get a kick out of this. <clears throat> you don't see this a lot. It's a sliding door. And the beauty of this is with a three-quarter inch piece of plywood, you can easily build a slider into that. So nothing's swinging out. It's a huge space saver, and it works, and it looks pretty cool. You don't have to worry about hinges or anything. I mentioned in her video, this is modular. This is just an extra piece of foam here. Uh, it just worked out this way where that thing fits there, and that's where I put it when I'm driving. But this is all going to get redone. The top on this will be the same African mahogany that you see here. Uh, this folds down, and I've got 
So I do this with one hand for you. Whoop. So I've got the storage in here now. That's where I keep the folding toilet seat and the solar panels, another fan, my binos, the coffee cup up there and some other stuff. It's not super well organized, but it works. Uh, I've got extra gear in these Molly 2 packs. They're mounted to one of these old metal grid things. These are from the closets, the kitchen closets from out here in LA back in the 20s uh, where you'd put fruit and vegetables to air out. I got a few of those. Uh, the seat is on a swivel uh, made by Derek Wolfson of Iron Cloud Metalworks. Highly recommend that. This is a five gallon water jug here. Uh, actually has had water in it for a couple of years now. But that this is great if uh, I've got this and the other one, I'm in really good shape. And this would be not potable, right? I mean, it is, but it doesn't have to be. But you could put that out in the sun and I'll get pl plenty warm for a shower. I've got in this cupboard here, stoves and different things. One of the things I have is a pump that's uh, USB powered. Again, it will power off of my Blue Eddy solar generator. I think that's a 500 watt, if I'm not mistaken. It says 300 watt out on that thing, but I'm sure it was called a 500 when I bought it. And it did come with the solar panels. It does everything I needed to do so far. Works fine with the fridge. Uh, but again, with the pump, it's great. You stick it in here in the water container and it comes with a, uh, like a, a hose end and also it comes with a shower head. So you can take a shower anywhere. Pretty, pretty cool. Uh, this is pretty much almost my whole kit for all my carpentry tools back here, underneath here, and my mechanics tools, and there's still plenty of room. So, yeah. The console was sent to me by a guy in Florida. It works. The wiring was already, it already existed up in the ceiling to make it work. I just had to put the thermostat up front in the grill, and that was already there as well. So it was just plug and play. There was one thing I had to plug in underneath the dash. Uh, yeah, I've got the quad lock system here that charges my phone at the same time while I'm driving. So that's fantastic. Still run the factory stereo and I have this thing here that plugs into my iPod that plays through the stereo, the stereo speakers. But I'm not super stoked with that. So I think... I need another stereo and I'm, I'm on the fence with it. I can buy another one of these on eBay for like 250 bucks that has the CD missing, but with an auxiliary input for an iPod. I'm considering that because it'll look factory, it'll be plug and play, I'll be, I have the whole thing done in 20 minutes or get a double din screen here that has all the modern stuff in it. And if I could find one that I knew, I could bring my laptop out here and put all my music on if that's possible, you tell me, because I'll get that unit, and that would be a nice uh, upgrade. I put the blanket up here, uh, just glued that on. I think it looks pretty cool. I don't know how long it's gonna last. I think in one spot it's coming down. I didn't get enough glue on it, but it's fine. I can spray some back up in there. I look at everything I've done here as temporary, uh, because I'm always messing with it. It's not a big deal for me if something doesn't work and I got to change it. This is just a furniture blanket I put on top of my bedding to protect it from dust. I put that on when I'm driving out there and when I'm in the city. I also made two large trays that fit on here that are wood uh, that I was using to put stuff on. I just haven't been diligent about that. Uh, I think this pretty much covers it. I'm I've got the new, so the transmission is a replacement Jasper transmission. Uh, I put that in a few years ago. It went out on me in Tucson, and it's got to have at least the 30,000 miles on it now. So my uh, next thing on this is to uh, do a service on this. I've got a, I bought a new pan for it that has a drain plug, but you'll notice this pan is the larger capacity pan. So that's what I got. I got another one of those. Again, like I said, as a drain plug, I got a new uh, filter for it. So I'll be servicing that. When I do that, I'll do a video on it for you. Uh, I've replaced the front drive shaft, the CV axles many times, upper and lower ball joints a couple times. I do all this myself. Um, this thing does not leak. It does not burn any oil. I had a small weeping underneath here here's the back side crap here's another good look at one of those engine lift brackets um, i had 
a little weep going on here. Let's see. It was coming down from the timing cover here. And I put, is there some, maybe some more here. It's not too bad. I put some of that ATP 205 in this thing and drove it back from the desert and that pretty much stopped it completely. I'm, I'm real happy about that because I don't want to take that off. But I probably will be taking that timing cover off because uh, it might need a new timing chain. I'm not having any issues with it, but it's, I'm, I think about things in terms of preventative maintenance a lot. Uh, you guys know I'm having an issue with my... What is that thing I always forget? The Hydro Boost leaks, so I'm gonna have to take that apart. I have a new steering box to put in this thing uh, when I'm ready. Again, it's not needed at the moment, but I'll probably do that soon. My entire thought process with this is all about, uh, you know, making it as new as possible. It's basically, basically a new truck. I mean, about as close to it as you can get. My next big improvement on this, um, will be another engine that'll be my next improvement on this thing it uh i'm considering an aluminum block v8 ls engine i want something that's got the fuel injectors on the top that i can get to and easily service you know <clears throat> the irony is you can put a v8 in this thing and get better fuel economy and more power so these were designed for a v8 but they just went with the v6 when they really started producing them so a v8 does fit you guys should know it actually worked with this transmission my end goal on this is uh you know this is if i can swing it financially what i'd really love for this truck would be uh, aluminum ls v8 with a five or six speed automatic transmission i don't know which one that would be but a multi-speed automatic transmission with a v8 is just going to be amazing uh, as a matter of fact, if I could get a multi-speed transmission now, even with the V6 engine, that's going to give you more options in your power band and whatnot. It's going to give you better fuel economy. So that's where my brain is at, and uh, we'll see if that ever happens. Anyhow, if there's something I left out, I can't imagine. Why. I mean, there's normal common sense stuff. I mean, the one thing I haven't done yet that I, well, there's a few things I already mentioned them to you, but it's still running the... Uh, Rancho adjustable shocks up front. I know I need to replace them. Uh, this bumper jumps around, makes a little noise when I'm driving. You know, yeah, that's a, a thing. Uh, I should probably try to secure that a little bit better. But if I can get a metal, like a luminous bumper on there, and I really would like a winch to go with that, that is the plan. Another upgrade I need to do, I mean, aside from trying to just paint these. <laughs> There are different windshield wipers for this. Uh, Aaron, if you're watching, I still haven't done it. <laughs> My boy Aaron Spoolstra, he's, he's really, he's had eight Astro vans and he found that um, uh, the windshield wipers that come off of uh, like the Sierras and other vehicles, they lift here and they lift all the way out and lock up in place, which would be a very nice thing to have when you're cleaning your windshield or if you're in a cold environment where it's going to snow and freeze overnight. It's nice to have your windshield wipers standing up. So I, I need to do that. I've got the part numbers and everything to get those. So that'll probably happen at some point. Uh, this is a must. These things here, you can leave your front windows cracked and get airflow. Even with these cracked and all the other windows closed, if I'm sleeping in the back, at night in this thing, I can feel air circulating over my head. As you guys know, these windows pop out, so that's good. Um, yeah, I mean, the Astro vans are pretty capable. Of course, I've made it way more capable. I think in terms of uh, somebody made a comment, you know, he's, he's, he's clearly a survivalist or prepper or something. Yeah, I mean, that's my mindset. Absolutely. This thing... You know, if you have a discerning eye, you look at this and you go, oh, this guy's, yeah, he's got this thing decked. But not really compared to what you see out there in the overlanding world, in the 4x4 world, right? These guys are dumping tens of thousands of dollars into their vehicle and they're letting you know it. With all the bling and all the stuff strapped to it. So this is relatively subdued, you know? It's not too bad. I mean, I do have the stickers. It's clearly, <laughs> clearly somebody on social media. I mean, I got it right there on the side. That's how it, that's changed my attitude slightly when I'm driving. I mean, I still hang my head out the window at times and, and yell at people. But now if I do it, they can go, oh, we know where this guy is. We know how to find him. <laughs> 
Somebody mentioned the license plates and blacking them out. Uh, you know, whatever. What are you going to do? You want to come and find me? Come and find me. I, I don't really care. I'm ready for you. So, uh, yeah, that's it. I'm lucky I can work in this. Uh, I have a shop here in this garage. And look at this yard with these roses, man. That's how beautiful is that? It's too bad you can't smell them. They, they're delicious smelling. Anyhow, I hope this covered everything. The van's got like 200 and... Hey, how about instead of me guessing, we just turn the key. Let's, let's see what the mileage says. Besides then, I can prove to you that there's no lights on or anything, right? Okay. Yeah, I don't know if you can read that. 212 138 there's probably more than that on there really because uh, I drove for a while with larger tires with the 30 inch tires without changing the speedo you can see where my oil pressure is at you know we're just about 60 you know a solid 55 there uh, it's not warmed up yet yeah I went with the dash pad, it's not cracked, it's just cleaner. I can take that out, shake out, or vacuum it. You know, again, here's your quad lock system. This clip here is not intended to go on top of the charger. I did that because I wouldn't stay with the magnet, you know. So I, I just really cranked on this set screw, and now the phone sits in there. That's, it's integral to the case. That's it for now, man. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and uh, I'm doing it for you. For you. I got better things to do, man. But I do appreciate you being here and digging on the van and wanting to know more about it. So, yeah, that's it. Have a great day. Thanks for being here. Uh, be good to one another. You know, do your best to help each other out. Uh, funny thing, that one gauge sometimes stays on when I take the key out. Keep a lot of books in here. We'll get into that another time. So, uh, yeah. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day. Thanks for digging on the van.